Dawson Ryder with you. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. It is time for my Holiday Buyer's Guide 2019 where I tell you stuff to buy your friends or more likely yourself. So let's go ahead and get started with this. And this is being filmed around Black Friday and I don't, you don't, don't know how many deals are going to be happening on the Toku related stuff, but this is just kind of blanket, uh, mainly Toku stuff, but also some other stuff. Uh, like I said, let's get started with Power Rangers. So I have three main things I was going to corely that's a technical word, recommend for Power Rangers. Number one of which is the Lightning Collection. This is my visual aid here. Thank you, Doogie. Lightning Collection is not perfect. It's had its flaws and I've highlighted that in my reviews and stuff, but it's still a really cool collector's line of figures, some of the best figures we've gotten in many respects. And there's quite a wide variety of ones to pick from, more so at least than we thought at the beginning of the year. So I definitely recommend checking these out for some of your favorite characters. And like I said, it's kind of cool that we actually have a decent amount to pick one from them. We honestly thought it was just going to be maybe four or five figures. So this was a really cool standout for Ranger fans, either for, you know, your friends or for yourself, for kind of the higher end collector's version. Keeping in with the concept of figures, I also wanted to recommend just the basic Beast Morphers figure, if you're a Beast Morphers fan. Mainly because I was surprised how much I liked these. I'm not sure if they're the absolute best figures we've ever gotten, but when Hasbro brought the, brought the property, brought... Hasbro bought the property, one of the things I was only really worried about was the figures because, you know, I've seen like the regular Avengers and Star Wars figures that are just kind of generic and don't have much articulation, but these are surprisingly in line with the quality. Yes, I said quality because Bandai always did, or at least mostly did a decent job with the five inch figures. So I was surprised by how much I wound up liking these and they're much more inexpensive and you can get like a Blaze figure early before we get the Lightning Collection one as well as Roxy. So you can basically get all the core Beast Morphers characters for a fairly reasonable price. So lastly for the Beast Morphers stuff is the Morpher. I think this was a really cool Morpher. Again, not perfect and there is a little bit like inaccuracy with it and, and I kind of do wish it had like a regular mode to it, but I still think it was a really fun Morpher with a lot of sounds and you get even more playability if you're collecting this and the figures so you get the different keys with different sounds and I think this was a very solid first start for Hasbro. I feel like people would probably expect me to recommend the Zords and it's not that I don't recommend them. Like, I'm not like, stay away from the holidays, your Christmas will be ruined. I'm kind of more mixed on them than I originally intended. And also I do want to highlight that I have yet to see the red and gold Zords in retail, like in person. Like I've seen them online, that's where I got them, but I haven't seen them in person. I know some people are finding them at a store called Meyer, but that does not exist on my earth or probably any earth really. I think it's a hoax to be honest. It's fake news. Sad. Now moving on to Sentai, I have two core recommendations. Number one of which is the Guy Solkin. I mean, the Ryu Solkin is cool too, so if you're into that more so, then, you know, go for it. But I'm really a huge fan of this because I really like Guy Zorg, one of my favorite characters. I really like the color scheme for it, and I really like the sounds. It kind of simplified it so you don't have to do this as much with the sounds. It's got a little bit cooler sounds for me, and uh, not Frieza sounds, cooler sounds. But I also really like that we actually got this at retail. This would have been something I would have easily assumed would have been a premium Bandai exclusive. So I think it's actually really nice. It was an easier to pick up retail exclusive. So if you're a Guy Zorg fan, I can definitely recommend putting this on your list. Next up, I'm using this guy as my example because he was the easiest to grab off the shelf and also one of my personal favorite designs. But I'm just gonna recommend, honestly, any of the Ryu Soldier Mecha because it's kind of a matter of taste which one you personally like. like you might might hate this one, but like Neptune, I personally like both. But like for you or you know someone you're shopping for, I recommend getting them Ryu Soldier Mecha. I would, I mean, it's kind of expensive, but I would recommend at least getting one of these and then like an auxiliary to sort of take advantage of the playability of the Lego dynamic. But I think this has been a really cool Mecha line this year. There isn't a design I really dislike at all, and there's like nice playability between all of them. So I think it's a really cool and fun recommendation for a Sentai fan. Rounding out the trilogy of Toku stuff that I cover is Ryder, obviously, and of course one of my main recommendations is the Zero One Hidden Driver. Um, luckily, even though it says hidden, it's not very hard to find. Really, really like this driver. I like the design of it. I love the way the Progrise keys work. I love the sounds in it. I think it's really cool. It's one of my more favorite drivers in recent years. And then of course also the Shot Riser is a good recommendation. Like it's kind of up to your personal taste or the person you're buying for is personal taste. I do like both. I'm going to be honest, I prefer this a little bit more. Like I'm always, I've been a fan of weapon changers, but for some reason I just like the sounds and functionality of this one a little bit more. But both are good recommendations. Now are you wondering, is there any Geo recommendations? No, because I think the ultimate Christmas present to all of us is that Soko's gone. Except he's coming back for the team up movie. 
Way to ruin the holidays, guys. And by guys, I mean me. All right, now for some sort of comic and bookish recommendations. Of course, there's the Shattered Grid Annual, or Annual, the Shattered Grid Collection. Uh, this is a really good way to just catch some out of on Shattered Grid all at once. Like, or just pick it up for yourself if you're a Shattered Grid fan. But I mentioned in my review of this, this is a really good way to have it all if you want all of the story in one place to go and you have an exclusive story and a cool cover. But it's also a cool way to recommend it to somebody that maybe have been interested in the comic. This is a good way to be like, hey look, this is what happened. It's kind of pricey though for that type of thing, so there's also the, the paperback one. But basically I recommend Shattered Grid for the holidays. It's a good story and if you can afford picking this up, it's a really cool bit. And in general, I recommend checking out the PR comics for the holidays if you thought about getting into it. Speaking of, I know this was a controversial story, but I can recommend picking this up um, for a fan or, or whether it's for yourself as a fan or for your friend. Like I said, it is a little bit controversial, but I still think it's a cool story and I think it's worth checking out and I think it's just neat to have that they decided to do something like this. Like this is really our first true like standalone graphic novel that's not NNPR directly tied. We did the Solar Dragon of course, but that's obviously very Tommy Green, you know, related and I think it's really cool we got this. So, um, I can still recommend it. I know it was controversial, but I still think it's solid and at least worth a look. So sort of in some non-quick PR, um, some non-PR quick recommendations. Um, I'm a huge Magicians fan and I think it's really cool that they did this Alice story. And they're also doing a new comic as well, which I still needed to check out, which takes place like after the main story with the new generation. But, huge Magicians fan, so I had to give it a shout out and I think this was cool. And lastly, just this was kind of neat because I've been on a Star Wars kick. They did this Resistance Reborn novel and it's got a really cool cover, so. No, but I just took it off because it's easier for me to read without this on there. But this isn't the greatest book I've ever read, but I think it was a really cool lead up um, to sort of, you know, satisfy my Star Wars hype amongst all the other stuff leading up to The Last Jedi, so I just felt like kind of giving it a shout out. Realize I said The Last Jedi and I meant Rise of the Skywalker, you know what I mean. As far as movie goes, um, I have a really awkward, like, indie pick that's pretty, it's a pretty unknown movie called Endgame. I mean, this is a really basic pick, but, you know, you probably have already seen it, but it was really cool, one of the coolest events of the year, so it's on my recommendations, obviously. I had to pull it out. That's what a lot of indie games are like that. And then another pick I have for this list for movies to pick up is Toy Story 4. I thought it was really good. I don't have a visual aid because I'm filming this slightly before Black Friday and I'm waiting to pick it up because they usually put the Pixar movies on a deep cut sale of, like, 50 cents off. For real. Nintendo games and Pixar movies. Let it go. They never go on sale anything more significant than like two dollars. It's like, let it go, you're not special. Toy Story 4 I thought was really good. I mean, I knew I was gonna like it, but I was surprised by how much, so I definitely recommend checking that out. Another one I don't have a visual aid for because I'm picking it up on Black Friday uh, was Happy Death Day to You. I really liked the original and I thought the second one was a really cool and fun sequel and one of my more favorite movies of the year. So I can recommend checking that out. I feel like it didn't get a lot of love in that one. This is not a movie that came out this year, but I wanted to give this movie love as well since we're kind of in a Star Wars season right now. Fanboys, this is a really cool comedy movie based on these friends going to see an early copy of episode one. Uh, I think it's really underrated, one of my favorite movies, I really like it, and I just recently finally got the Blu-ray, so I just wanted to give it a shout out. Non-buying news, I just wanted to give a quick another shout out, that's the the word of this video, shout out. But as Doctor Sleep is in theaters right now, I feel like that also didn't get a lot of love, and if you're a fan of The Shining or horror movies, I thought it was really one of the best movies of the year. Like, it was, in its own right, a really good horror movie, but also a great follow-up to The Shining without fully just seeming like a cash-in on Shining Nostalgia, and I feel like not enough people saw it and it was really good, so I felt like mentioning it. Video game-wise, I have two basic picks, obviously, uh, Pokemon. I know, again, something else has been kind of controversial because, like, the National Deck stuff, but if you can get past all that or you don't care about all that so much or you can wait it out because inevitably Pokemon Ultra Shield or whatever will probably bring stuff back, I don't know, but regardless, it's still a really cool po Pokemon fun to have for the holidays if you can sort of get past all the nonsense. Nonsense! Then, of course, Jedi Fallen Order, another basic pick. Not a perfect game, kind of glitchy, a little bit retready, but still a really cool game with uh, a really cool story and pretty much mostly fun gameplay. If you just set it on story mode. Seriously, I didn't expect it to be this difficult. I'm like, it's like Jedi Master Mode. It's like, oh, for anyone that's ever played a game anywhere before. I'm like, okay, I've played a game before. And then it's like, whoa, I don't want my games to be challenging. Take the easy way out. I always do. It's so easy. But still, really cool game. Lots of Star Wars content for fans this season, which is really cool. So I had to recommend it. But that is about it for my picks. Hope you guys found some cool stuff in there that you might want to check out. Just wanted to kind of give you my recommendations, which is why I made this video. I mean, obviously, would I not give you my recommendations? 
recommendations. Anyway, I'm getting away from myself. Hope you guys have a good holiday season and good, you know, shopping out there for Black Friday and beyond. This makes it sound like this is my last video of the year. It's not, just in general. I'll still hope you have a good holiday in the videos I make after this. I'm just saying it now. Again, I got away from myself again. It's time to sign out, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. Um, you know, yeah. Signing out. Why, this is a weird, like, why did I stumble upon the